Good morning. I want to introduce you to Jane. Now, if I get this right, it'll be, it'll be a miracle. Maca Ma Ma I've had it before. Mark Zuski, or something like that. But she goes by the name Nightbird. She recently appeared on America's Got Talent, which I watched on my computer. And she got the gold buzzer, which is really big on that show. And it's a photograph of her and Simon Cowell and her getting the gold buzzer. I was impressed with her because she was, she was a person who came up with a story of cancer and multiple cancers, and she was extremely positive, inspirational in the way in which she presented herself, excited, um, uh, enthusiastic, really positive person. And so I began to look her up, as everybody else I think in the world did, because she went viral. Um, the song's been watched a thousand, millions of times and um, her, her website's got a lot of use. And so I went there and I found a blog that she'd written. I also discovered that she was a committed Christian person and that part of her positivity comes from her Christian faith. And I decided to read to you this morning a thing called um, God is on the bathroom floor, which is one of her blogs, which I've edited a bit to make it a little bit shorter. But what impressed me about this blog, about this, really, this poem, this prose poetry, uh, was that it was, it's a bit of a lament, but through the lament come sparks of good news, which relates well, I think, to our reading, even though that's all about good news. They've come from a place of despair, and the sparks of good news are coming through. And I think in a time when we're all sitting here wearing masks, sparks of good news, and even a little bit of understanding of despair might not be a bad thing. God is on the bathroom floor. After the doctor told me I was, I was dying, and after the man I married said he didn't love me anymore, I spent three months propped against the wall. On nights that I could not sleep, I laid in the tub like an insect, staring at my reflection in the shower knob. I vomited until I was hollow. I rolled up under my robe on the tile. The bathroom floor became my place to hide, where I could scream and be ugly, where I could sob and spit and eventually doze off, happy to be asleep even with my head on the toilet. I've had cancer three times now, and I have barely passed 30. There are times when I wonder if I must have done what I must have done to de deserve such a story. I fear sometimes that when I die and meet with God, that he will say I, I disappointed him, or offended him, or failed him. Maybe he'll say I just never learned the lesson or that I wasn't grateful enough. But one thing I know for sure is this. He can never say that he did not know me. I am God's downstairs neighbour, banging on the ceiling with a broomstick. I show up at his door every day, sometimes with songs, sometimes with curses, sometimes apologies, gifts, questions, demands. Sometimes I use my key under the mat to let myself in. Other times I sulk outside until he opens the door to me himself. I have called him a cheat and a liar and I meant it. I have told him I wanted to die and I meant it. Tears have become my only, uh, the only prayer I know. Prayers roll over my nostrils and drip down my forearms. They fall to the ground as I reach for him. These are the prayers I repeat, night and day, sunrise, sunset. Call me bitter if you want to, that's fair. Count me among the angry, the cynical, the offended, the hardened. But count me also among the friends of God, for I have seen him in rare form. I have felt his exhale, laid in his shadow, squinted to read the message he wrote for me in the grout on the bathroom floor, I'm sad too. 
I see mercy in the dusty sunlight that outlines the trees, in my mother's crooked hands, in the blanket my friend left for me, in the harmony of the wind chimes. It's not the mercy that I asked for, but it is mercy nonetheless. And I learned a new prayer. Thank you. It's a prayer I don't mean yet, but I will repeat it until I do. Call me cursed, call me lost, call me scorned, but that's not all. Call me chosen, blessed, sought after. Call me the one who God whispers his secrets to. Even on days when I am not so sick, sometimes I lay on the mat in the afternoon light to listen for him. I know it sounds crazy, but I can't, and I can't really explain it. But God is in there, even now. I have heard it said that some people can't see God because they don't look low enough. And it's true. Look, go, look lower. God is on the bathroom floor. This is a, a psalm of communication. This is about communion. She is having a real conversation with God, a real deep and meaningful conversation with God in the reality of her circumstance. We too come as ordinary human people in the circumstance that we have and we deal with our lives and we're invited into this communication, this conversation with God as we take bread and wine.